Okay, got this mounted with a screw chuck. We're going to again uh, face off the true up the rim. And uh, Captain Eddie, I listened to you. I took my ring off. Getting a nice clean cut on this black limba. This is just a very, very oily. It's uh, it's fairly hard, but not as hard as some. But that oil just makes it cut real, real well. Uh oh, uh oh. I see a little crack here. Oh no. Hope I can work through that. I have to put a little. Doesn't look like it's structural all the way through. So hopefully I can seal that with some CA. That's the only one. Hmm. Need to see that. Okay, we're going to pick up just a little more, uh, another cut here around this edge over and sand it and I'll do a little finishing here on the bottom and then we'll reverse it and pick up where we left off. Just want to chamfer that in just a little bit, make sure it's going to be able to sit, sit flat. Okay, we're going to use my little uh, Thompson 3 8 inch bowl gouge with a C flute to it to kind of clean up the bottom here a little bit. I want to leave the center proud. I want to have that convex uh, shape, but it's got to come down just a little bit and then of course smooth smooth this out. So we'll go ahead and take care of that. I'm going to use this square end square in scraper to get just a little bit this little bit of a ripple out okay we got this sanded up to uh, 400 I'm going to go ahead and take it off the woodworm screw reverse chuck it Using that recess we just made. Press on one finger. Snug it up just a little bit. Don't over tighten it. Nice, firm, secure method as is. So let's go ahead and start. We're first we're going to work on the rim before we hollow it out to make, keep that mass as heavy as possible. So I'm going to slope that rim down just a little bit using bowl gouge. Now, for aesthetics, we need to decide about how wide that rim uh, needs to be. Um, some folks say one third, some folks say at least one and a quarter inches. Uh, I think I'm going to go with something like uh, a third. That would be about four inches. Let's see. No, I don't think I want to go quite that big. Two inches is going to be plenty. A little bit less than we've got now.
Now, I'm going to try to mimic the uh, outside shape, so I need to go in a little, little steeper. Before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and, and treat this edge. It's a sharp edge. We want to go ahead and knock off that sharpness. Very careful so we don't splinter it out. And we really need to true up that surface a little bit, so I'm going to take a little bigger, bigger gouge and go ahead and true that up a little bit. This grain is so pretty, I don't think I'm going to try to do anything really fancy other than maybe put a little bit of bead here at the, uh, at the rim. And I think that looks, that looks good. Go ahead now, start taking it out of the center. exactly where that rim's going to be and I think I'm going to make it right about here and I'm going to put a small bead there on the other side okay and then take it down to that bead so I'm going to take my detail spindle gouge that's the one that's Oh, got a very shallow flute, very heavy, nice stiff, stiff bar, and I'm going to use that to uh, detail that bead. clean up that finish a little bit. I'm liking that bead right there. I'll come in a little bit steeper. Bowl gouge. We'll come in right there. Undercut it slightly. Okay. Something a little bigger here to 
haul it out there. Right? Yeah, I'll just Okay, this is all in grain through here, so this is kind of a tough cut. Uh, sometimes it's a little easier to take away some of the wood like this. I need to go quite a bit thinner here. This is looking pretty good. I need to smooth this cut up. I think I'm going to go ahead and clean this up before I go any further with some uh, with just, just a nice, smooth, slow cut down here to the edge. feel a little bit of vibration but, but that's done pretty well looks like I might have picked up a little chatter here a little chatter from the vibration so I think I'm going to brace it with my hand and maybe uh, use a scraper clean that up I'm going to use a really larger scraper than that scraper to get in here. I don't know that I don't know that I'd recommend that cut to everybody. It's something you got to be careful of. Uh, it certainly gets hot if you press too hard, but I've pressed very gently. And looking at the light, I, it looks like I've just about gotten out all the chatter. Might make one more little pass down through here at a uh, at an angle, sharp angle like that. Kind of clean up that one little area in there. Okay, I've sanded up the rim. Now I'm going to go in a little bit deeper and make it just a little bit of a shadow line undercut right here. There's the bevel. I didn't engage it straight on. I'll come back and clean that up. Come straight in, brace it with your fingers so it doesn't skate.
digital calipers here. Touch right behind that bead for a bit of a shadow line. Like so. That'll give it just a little, little more pop. Okay. Got a little deeper here. That's probably about right. I'm mostly, that's okay. I gotta get rid of this. Take that center out. Okay, what we have is a big fail. We must have had a fault line. We have to look for the other pieces. This thing was running a little off balance. And it looked like the wood failed. Okay, well, we didn't finish it, but you saw where we're heading with it. Got most of it done. And I think we're going to call that quits on this one. Not much I can do with that. Um, <laughs> that was kind of embarrassing. I can see my uh, I've got a fluorescent, fluorescent light here on the floor. So, meanwhile, I want to show you <laughs> I want to show you a slideshow of some uh, platters that I've done successfully. And boy, I just hate that because this was a beautiful, expensive piece of wood, and I just wonder where the fault was. Crack. 
It might have been that one crack, probably, it was deeper than I thought that I had filled some, some CA in. Well, it's a wrap up. I replaced her flip, the fluorescent light bulb, uh, put the broken pieces in the trash. I found the uh, missing piece over behind the other lathe. I've examined it uh, closely. Uh, I did not feel a catch. I don't see signs of a catch. I think it was just a very small hairline fracture that the thing blew apart, um, which just, I think, serves as a reminder to all of us. Always wear your face shield when you're doing face, uh, face grain work, even when you're sanding, because if there is a small hairline fracture, it can, it can blow up. I, I would say I probably was turning a little faster. I was turning at about maybe 1,200, whereas ordinarily I might have turned at 1,000. Don't think it had, that had any uh, um, impact on, on the situation. Don't, don't think it affected it. I think it was just a hairline fracture, but things happen. Uh, turn safe. Any comments, welcome. Uh, if you like this video and you want to get on the list for new ones that come out, please subscribe. Thanks.